Well, I'm our facts from Mars, and once again, we have another whacked out nutcase liberal. Richard E. Franco is at University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And he's going after Trump because Trump pardoned Joe Arpaio, the sheriff. Here's what he's com- this uh, scumbag is comparing uh, Arpaio to. In August of 1932, in the town of Paul nine Nazi stormtroopers murdered a supporter of the German Communist Party, kicking him to death in his own apartment as his family watched him order. Six were convicted, with five receiving death penalty. After the verdict, Hitler sent them a telegram in which he declared them his boundless loyalty. Shortly after he came to power in 1933, he pardoned the killers. While former Sheriff Joe Arpaio never kicked anyone to death, his pardon of Donald Trump by Donald Trump raises disturbing parallels. You're out of your mind. There's no parallels there. Hitler is just about to come, just starting to come to power. Trump is in power. And Joe Arpaio is not a stormtrooper or anything like that. This is one individual. This, this was a gang of thugs that did this. Uh, like Ant- Antifa which the uh, left is starting to turn against. So, some of the people on the left, from what I understand, can't stand that Antifa. Upon gaining power, Hitler immediately pardoned allies who perpetrated ghastly crimes against their deemed enemies of the nation. What do we make of Trump's pardon of a political ally, a man duly convicted of a systematic deprivations of people's constitutional rights, people Trump never considered part of his America? Well, yeah, that's because they're illegal aliens. As professor of modern German history, this administration seemingly provides such unpleasant reminders of Germany's dark past on a regular basis. What a nut job. What can German history teach us about this latest history episode? How, for example, did the pardon of the Potemkin killers help us better understand Hitler? What implication did it have for the development of the Third Reich? And how does that knowledge help us better understand Trump and the dangers that his pardon of Arpaio poses for the future of the United States? an 85 year old man. These were younger thugs. Arpaio was a law enforcer. These were thugs. There's no comparison, you idiot! Americans believe that our long established legal institutions and traditions will withstand any attempt by Trump to undermine the rule of law. Unbelievable. Ours, after all, is government of laws, not people. But how much comfort should we really take in such traditions? Here, German history provides a frightening lesson. There's no comparison, you moron! Germans, too, took a great pride in the long established tradition of the Rechstadt, a state under the rule of law. Here one may not agree with law, but could be confident that it would be applied consistently. What we see with Hitler and his determination to destroy that tradition as well as remarkable ease and speed in which he was able to do just that. Unbelievable. This is a long article, I'm not going to read the rest of it. This is a sick, diseased individual. 
would think like this. There's no comparison here. Joel O'Farrell was an 85 year old man. He was a law enforcer all his life. And furthermore, his con conviction was purely political by a corrupt judge who should have uh, lost his or her uh, license to practice law. Should have been disbarred. These were th Nazi thugs, similar to Antifa, like I said, Antifa, whatever. Unbelievable. I don't know how much more twisted these people on the left can get. This really pisses me off, though. When I say I'm angry, I'm angry, believe me. I don't do this stuff for money, because I'm not making any money. I do it uh, for fun, and I do it for information and such. So I'm not like most of these YouTube announcers. I'm not doing it for money. And I am pissed. I'll tell you that much right now. I'm on a fax of Mars. I better go for a talk myself or yell myself horse. How do they get... They walk among us. That's all I can say. They walk among us.